Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Roberts, excuse me, and um, <clears throat> today I'm extremely um, upset, not surprised by our, um, what I would call um, self-centered cowards in our national um, political leadership, and <clears throat> they just um, voted and the president signed today a $96 billion um, aid package, $61 billion to go to Ukraine, $26 billion to go to Israel, and $8 billion to take care of different things that are supposed to defer um, China, China's aggression in the um, Far East. <clears throat> okay. None of this money was budgeted. None of this money exists. All what they did was they voted and said, we're going to give the president $96 billion in budget authority. So what they just came out and the president signed off was to say, it's kind of like you're at home. You have $10,000 budgeted to take care of your household expenses for the year, okay? Then out of the middle of nowhere, you go and say, I just got the special magic wand and now I can spend $12,000 this year on my um, household expenses. But I never increased my household income by one penny to go along. So that $12,000 that I'm going to expend, this imaginary money that someone else is going to have to pay for it. I'm not going to pay for it. I'm going to spend it, but someone else is going to have to pay for that. And it's really against the law because Congress and the president signed off when they've signed the budget, pay as you go. Which means if I rate, I'm going to spend $96 billion more, I either have to raise $96 billion more, I have to cut $96 billion of my other part of my budget, or a combination of. And you may be smoking something if you um, believe that Congress is going to cut money. And you can probably even smoke more if you think the president is going to raise taxes to cover the costs. And remember, recreation marijuana is not legal in New Hampshire yet. So, $96 billion. Let's put that $96 billion in perspective. $61 billion will go to Ukraine. You know what? $61 billion doesn't seem much out of $6 trillion. But you know what the United States Marine Corps' total budget is for this year, this fiscal year? 
it's less than $54 billion. So what we're doing is <clears throat> just by the president signing today, he is giving Ukraine about 115% of the United States Marine Corps budget. About 180,000 individual ships buying aircraft, a whole bunch of stuff. So there it is. Okay. Well, you say, hey, that really isn't, um, you know what, we got to protect uh, Ukraine, we got to protect from Russian um, expansionists. Russia has already proved it does not have the military um, capability to take on NATO. Why would Russia think of attacking one of the NATO uh, members? So, putting a, another perspective, so I went and looked from 1946, got a list from 1946 to 2023 in 2022 dollars. So it's already, um, so now you get a constant based on 2022 dollars. Number 10 in military and economic aid was France at 75 million. Turkey at 75 million. India, 75 million. United Kingdom, 85 million. Excuse me. South Korea, 90 million. Iraq, 100 million. South Vietnam, which no longer exists, 130 million. Afghanistan, 160 million. Egypt, 170 million, and Israel, 300 million. These are the top 10. This is money that the U.S. taxpayers have provided to these countries. These are the top 10, and there's about 183, 184 countries in the world, and so... <clears throat> We have given economic aid to almost all of them since the um, end of World War II. So, you can go and say, well, you know, $61 billion doesn't even make Ukraine in the top 10. Well, we had already given Ukraine a hundred and thirteen billion dollars and now with this additional 61 billion we're going to give that means by the end of this year we would have given ukraine 174 billion dollars again that's all um, that's a little bit more than the budget for the marine corps for the last three years that's how much money. And with just those two years that we have been giving money to Ukraine, military assistance, uh, money to pay the Ukrainian government, and which the president has done away with elections while we're still in crisis, and economic development, <clears throat> you know, to keep people working in Ukraine, and also money to um, resettle Ukrainian um, refugees. So that means, <clears throat> basically, the war started two years ago in January, February time frame. So in a little bit more, basically, come the end of the year, and we'll say, we, so in three years, Ukraine, who wasn't even on the list because it was a Soviet Union member, 
and didn't really become back a separate country again until about 1990. Okay, in basically in three years, Ukraine has gone to number two on the list. At right now, at about 174 to 175 billion dollars, <throat> that 175 billion dollars that we have already given and will given does not exist. There is no magic check to write for this. What happens is the President of the United States is telling the Secretary of Treasure, Treasury, going, he says, well, I need $61 billion. He's saying, go out and sell $61 billion to, for Ukraine's money. Another $28 billion for um, Israel. Israel will go up to about $330 billion. Ukraine catching up fast at $174, $75 billion. And we need another $8 billion for to go to Asia. Like I said, $96 billion. So, <clears throat> Janet, we need $100 billion. Go out and issue $100 billion in bonds so we can pay the defense the defense contractors and other ones this money so because I can't spend money I here's the trick I can't spend money I don't have but once you sell those bonds I'll have that money and then I can spend it might of fact I'm sending equipment, about a billion dollars of stuff, to Ukraine today. We already had it planned, and as soon as I signed it, it was getting ready to ship. So, right? No big deal? Well, I'll say, well, that's 10-year bonds. So we'll sell $100 billion of 10-year notes. No big deal. <clears throat> so, you go in, you go out and sell $100 billion. Well, six years ago, that percentage on to sell those was 4.1. I mean, six weeks ago. Right now, if Janet was to go out and sell $100 billion, $100 billion in bonds, the interest rate interest rate would be 4.7 percent. Um, about two years ago, the interest rate was 1.6 percent. So basically, the interest rate has tripled in two years. So, you know, we got 5 times 10, that's 50. Okay, let's go... 72 divided by 5. So it comes out to 14. Since the United States has not been paying down its debt, it goes in and just reissues new bonds. So that's about a 90.999% chance that the United States will only pay interest on these bonds for the next 10 years. Okay? And you go, well, what's the big deal? Well, 10 years from now, the United States will go in and reissue those bonds at another interest rate. Okay? So 10 years from now, the United States would have paid you know, we just added it up, you know, 4.7, 100 billion. So, $4.7 billion a year for 10 years, because it won't pay down any of the principal. So basically over 10 years, it's gonna spend, pay at least $45 billion 
in interest. And 10 years from now, we'll reissue those bonds. And once we reissue those bonds at 100 um, billion, we basically almost paid half the bonds in interest because if you use the rule of 72, you'd say, and we round it off to 5% and divide by 72, that means if you are collecting interest on that bonds, so if the federal government could buy the bonds off, say, England for $100 billion and England was paying 4.7% interest on it and the United States kept the interest there, in 14 years, that hundred million would be 200 million and 14 years later that 200 million would be 400 million but we were in debt and we're doing it in the reverse <clears throat> okay i'm not going to be here and um pass judgment on whether that money should be going to ukraine whether that money should be going to egypt i mean um Israel or it should be going to Taiwan, Japan, the Philippines. My judgment is why and how can we keep spending money that doesn't exist? And then we have to take out another credit card to pay the interest on the loans come and do. So it's like every month when, the, when we go in and refinance our bonds, we're taking out another credit card. And so we're not gonna get any money back. Even if we gave loans to Ukraine, we're never gonna see that money back. And Let's look at some of the stuff the United States has done. It goes $160 billion on Afghanistan. Okay. What did we get with that $160 billion? I can't see anything positive out of that $160 billion. $60 billion we spent on Afghanistan. So, if we were to roll over that money today, just even at 4%, $160 billion, because we know we haven't paid any of that, that would mean of that $160 billion that we spent on Afghanistan, and we haven't paid for, we're gonna to have to pay $7 billion in interest. We spent $100 billion on Iraq. What happened to Iraq? Saddam Hussein must be laughing in his grave. Yes, we got him out of power. We got them executed, but since we haven't paid off the Iraq bills, the loans, we're gonna to have to pay $5 billion this year to take care of the interest on the money we spent in Iraq. And somehow I go, South Vietnam, up until Afghanistan, that was our longest war, and that cost us $130 billion. And the thing was, part of that was paid off. And it had just, we are just spending money that <clears throat> we don't have. Okay. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican, Independent, or whatever. The vast majority of us 
want the government to stop spending money except when it comes to us. We'll sit here and we'll say, oh, look at the Republican Party. They're blowing money left and right. And the Republicans will go and say, hey, look at the Democratic Party. They're spending money on all kinds of stuff. So I went and looked. When I looked at the thing, a $34.6 trillion debt. It's like $34.6 trillion debt. At the turn of the century, that debt, U.S. debt, was $6.4 trillion. And I was looking at the thing and go, well, you know, the Republicans did this. The Republicans cut taxes. Bush cut taxes. Trump cut taxes on the wealthy. That caused the United States to go deeper in debt. Yes, that is a true statement by reducing the income, the revenue that the government was receiving when the government was already in a deficit will increase the debt. Okay? A true statement, but an in, it's a true statement by itself but it easily becomes far less truthful if you're talking it in a paragraph or an article where you can expand on it. Bush, when I looked at B President Bush, is responsible for 12% of our total debt. President Obama is responsible for almost 28% of our national debt. Trump is 22.5% of our national debt. And President Biden, as of going over the United States Treasury numbers, which are up to date to the 22nd, President Biden is responsible for $9.6 trillion of our debt. And the way May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, got nine months. And um, <clears throat> depending on how the spending goes, President Biden in four years will <clears throat> in all likely have a greater effect on our total debt than any other person who's occupied the White House. He is only $2.7 trillion behind President Obama, who had eight years, and the way it's going, the United States is adding about a trillion dollars every hundred days. There is no question that um, President Biden will exceed President Trump's um, total of 7.8 trillion, because without question, President Biden will have increased the debt by an over another trillion dollars before um, January 21st. So these four men, two Democrats, two Republicans, have increased our national debt 81.6%. Yep. These four individuals are responsible for almost 82% of all the debt in the history of the United States going back to 1776. These four men 
have increased the debt by $28.3 trillion. Bush and Trump increased the debt by $12 trillion, which is 33.6%. Obama and Biden, or Biden and Obama, or some people say they're the same, increased the debt by 16.3%. So the two men, Biden and Obama, Obama are 47.5% of the debt. So there's a possibility that President Obama, I mean President Biden and Obama would be responsible for 50% of the American debt by um, January. Without question, if Biden gets elected, the debt is expected to expand by at least $6 trillion. So Obama, Obama, Freudian slip, Biden could easily increase in his eight years, increase the national debt by at least $15 trillion. And that is nothing, if nothing goes wrong. In between 1776 and the year 2000, the American debt was $6.4 trillion. And, and when I go over that 224 years, I go, there was the War of 1812, there was the Civil War, the Mexican War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War, Great Depression, numerous um, other depressions and recessions, business failures, railroad failures, bank failures, just to name a few. And that only resulted in $6.4 trillion in debt. Okay. Let's look at what's happened under the, these four individuals. Yeah, we went to the war in Iraq. We invaded Iraq. That was stupid. Very little justification. But we wanted to stay in quote until like we did in Vietnam. We can get peace with honor. Obama. You know, we went to Afghanistan. We stayed in Afghanistan way too long. Trump and Biden, COVID. And billions, hundreds of billions of dollars that was for COVID is unaccountable for. California has the worst rate, fraudulent rate. People in prison who went working were collecting stimulus checks. Oh, I'm on employment, I can collect a stimulus check. Some of the biggest winners in the um, with the COVID system were the Nigerian princesses. Prince and princesses. Here, just give me information, I'll help out. <clears throat> We gave $25 billion to airline companies. What did they do? Gave early retirement to people. And then they added all these different fees on to us. Tom Brady, um, you name it. All these athletes, a lot of these uh, musicians and stuff, who got COVID stimulus money, quote unquote, to leave their businesses open. We were creating money and throwing money away. You know, <clears throat> it's kind of like if we go to in Keene, 
we built the um, playground at Jonathan Daniels, a well worth playground, handicap accessible, great for children with special needs, and it's just not for Jan Jonathan Daniels, it's for kids all over King to use. But that cost us over $600,000 in COVID money, and if we were told we had to spend it by a certain time, or it was to be taken back. So a lot of people went out and spent stuff. The um, our taxes, when you were seeing taxes, <clears throat> and we had surplus six, seven, I mean, million dollar surpluses. Those were COVID money surpluses. So we just threw all the money out. Then we had the great $1 trillion plus infrastructure bill. Well, most of those jobs haven't been started yet. So that money, when we talk about a debt, what it is, the, the president may have authorization to spend a trillion bucks, but until that money is spent, it doesn't go on the debt. So that's why if you look at the app and stuff, and you look at different presidents, you will see, go, wait a minute, why is Franklin Roosevelt's deficit and stuff increasing? Well, because they're paying interest on it. Um, there's money that was authorized under Obama and Trump that's just now being spent now. So what it does, that money that's being spent now will go to under the line number that it was authorized. So if you're a Republican and you go and say, hey, we're fiscally responsible. We didn't cause this debt. Well, you're lying. Repub under Republican leadership, since 2001, the debt is going up $12 trillion, over 36%, or well, base 33, basically one out of every $3 of our debt comes under Bush and Trump's leadership. The um, Democrats, don't tell me, <clears throat> well, things would be so much better if we could raise more taxes so we could have more money to spend on homelessness, education, things like that. Under Obama and Biden, you've already raised the debt by $16 trillion, but you bailed out Wall Street, you bailed out the banks, you bailed out the um, GM, General Motors and Chrysler, you bailed out a lot of people. You spent billions of dollars on green energy projects that have failed. So, and now, you, the president just got what he wanted, $61 billion what he, for Ukraine, and what, that money, <laughs> compared that money to what the United States federal government is going to pay over the next 10 years, the, the, federal, the amount of money the federal government is going to spend over the next 10 years for K through 12 education, sorry, all your improvements and everything, that money went to Ukraine. And so one of the things... <clears throat> No, nope, that one, I made a mistake on that one. 
the one, the president on the um, 22nd, no, two days ago, says he's come up with a new plan to help um, people in college debt. It's going to be transformational for borrowers. So what the president has basically said is, we're going to eliminate a lot of the interest. And I was reading about the, in the one individual, he had $250,000. <clears> and most of it was interest. <clears throat> so he was really happy because he's got notification that he doesn't have to pay any of that interest back. He went to college. He loved music. His passion was music. He went to college for music, went and got his master's degree in music, but he found out that he couldn't make very much money in music, so he couldn't pay off his loans. And so he's saying, "What? The heck? Well, it is so good. It's like, I don't have to pay $200,000 in interest. I feel like a new person. Now... I can do what I always wanted to do. I'm going to go to Italy and study. Um, never once in the conversation that he was going did he ever say that he was going to pay the principal. And so if the, when the president writes off $200,000, okay, that is on the books as a government asset of $200,000. When the president wipes out that $200,000 asset, that means we're $200,000 deeper in debt. And so the president's plan that he just came out with should cost $147 billion. Yep, $147 billion. United States government with student loans is worth $147 billion in this one. So he's going to say, I wish $147 million. These people are no longer responsible for this amount of money. Well, again, that's $147 million in assets that the president may disappear. What most people like to do is make liabilities disappear and inflate your assets. That's one of the reasons that um, former President Trump is on trials. They said he overinflated his assets and under underreported his liabilities at times. So, <clears throat> so what happens is that hundred and forty-seven dollar billion goes on to the deficit increase the deficit. But one of the things, that's a low ball cost. Some people favor organizations favorable to the president says the real cost is $236 billion. Well, Congressional Budget Office and some of the other ones say the potential cost is 250 to $750 billion. Even though the Supreme Court said no, the president is looking for gimmicks. So, <clears throat> so it's rounded off in $500 billion. So the president in his gimmicks will, could add $500 billion to the deficit. 
And so that means $500 billion of new treasury bonds have to be issued and have to be bought. The question is, who's going to buy them? What country, after what the United States is doing, like with Russia and everything, is like, oh, man, I'm not putting my money into U.S. treasuries or stuff like that for the United States government to confiscate them and then just use them to pay for other stuff. You know what? I think we're going to use the brick money, you know? Brazil, China, Russia, India, South Africa. They don't trust the United States. They don't want their money in American dollars. And so, say for example, the United States government, President Biden says, bingo, I'm going to wipe out $600 billion of student debt. Okay. $600 $600 billion of interest, I'm going to say these guys no longer have to pay the interest. Well, what does that mean? Again, putting in con in concept, in perspective. That $600 billion is more money than what the federal government is going to give state and local school districts for K through 12 education over the next 10 years. That's right. That $600 billion is more than what the federal government is going to use to support K through 12 education over the next 10 years. But that's not all of it. Not only would it fund K through 12 over the next 10 years, it would include two times more than what would be needed to send all the kids to community college free. It would even be more to increase the Pell Grant for people to help people go to college so they don't... Um, have to take out big loans. So what the president is saying, and this is where I go to like, the Democrats, like, oh, you think it's a great idea to just eliminate these student loans. But nothing happens in a vacuum. So you eliminate it, $600 billion. Is that your number one priority? to eliminate $600 billion worth of interest <clears throat> on people's student loans. And you go back and think about it. If I go to college for four years and I graduate and I can't earn enough money with my college degree to pay my student loans? Because if I pay them, I could be all done in 10 years. But that might mean I might have to have a roommate, live in a smaller place, can't buy a new car or pretty young new car or used car oh those are judgment and choices so if the president gives up this 600 billion dollars and then we have to make it up by spending 600 billion dollars extra in bonds which would mean we would have to pay 30 to 40 billion dollars in interest which we would have to borrow another 30 to 40 billion dollars each year extra to pay the interest. So over a 10 year time frame, we pay 
$300 billion in interest, which then goes on the debt. And so, but you rather give that, that your priority over um, K through 12, more money to K through 12 for the next 10 years, free community college education, increased Pell Grants. You know, every single thing has a vacuum, has a cause and effect. Nothing happens into a vacuum. Okay. As I continue on money, a bunch of the problems that we have with those was because the Federal Reserve, which was supposed to be separate, basically separate, quasi-government, but separate, has been under a lot of political pressure, and they kept on um, interest rates really low. Basically, they created the point that money was basically free. So people are old enough, hey, you remember for a while, you could get anything you want, dot com this, dot com that, dot com this, dot com that, then the dot com went bust. Then they go and say, you know what? Every person in the United States should be able to buy their own home, irregardless if they're not even working. They should be able to buy their own home. So what we'll do is, hey, we can make the mortgage, mortgage rates basically nothing. We won't even have proof. You don't even have to show proof you're working, proof of income, anything. So everybody's buying houses then holy crap, now we have to pay for this. And then we had the housing bust, which resulted in the 2011 because people were doing all kinds of stuff. Hey, caught up. So then the Federal Reserve had to buy trillions and trillions of dollars of U.S. bonds because no one was buying it so they could create money. So, the Federal Reserve goes, man, we're in a lot of trouble. So this is what we're gonna do. We need to increase the, um, the interest rate because inflation's now like 9%. Inflation's not going away. Then the Congress passes the Inflation Reductive Act Put another trillion bucks out there, inflation definitely wasn't going away. So we raised it a little bit, not going away. Raise it a little bit, raise it a little bit, more, more, more. And now it's up here. And now you can no longer get a 2% two, 2 mortgage on your house. Mortgage is in the sevens right now. That's if you got really good credit. Nowhere near it used to be in the 80s when it was 18, 19%. And then it got better to 10%. But America is creating all these jobs. And it goes, this doesn't make sense. Economically, and under economics, when you cause the price of money to keep going higher and higher and higher, it should cause the economy to reduce. But no, it's garing, it's getting all these jobs, the stock market is setting records almost every single day, the price of gold is sky high, people are buying, and it's like, it doesn't make sense. Hey, now banks have to pay 4 and 5% interest on IRAs and things like that, and it's like, why isn't, why isn't the economy shrinking why isn't we having job losses why not people no longer buying a lot of stuff well you can thank joe biden and you go wow that is really good i can thank joe biden for what he's done 
to keep the economy going. Two things that are keeping the economy growing. The illegal migration and the pumping of federal dollars into the economy. As of today, the, um, by the Treasury, the fiscal year deficit from October 1st is $1.1 trillion. All of fiscal year 23 was $1.7 trillion. So if you look at it, <clears throat> and the, the government had to borrow $236 million, billion dollars last month just to even pay its bills. So what's happening is the federal government is pumping hundreds of billions of dollars into the economy, which is keeping the economy going. And you go, what do you mean? Yes. What we're doing is the federal government is giving out, it's just throwing money out into the economy to keep people going, to keep the economy pumping. The economy under economics and plain and simple shouldn't be growing at three point higher percent. The We shouldn't be creating 250 to 300 jobs a month. Anybody who studies economics knows that. But basically, we're really getting a sugar high from Congress and the president. And Republicans are in there too because they want the sugar to come to their um, communities. And you go, well, <clears throat> Before someone calls me a bigot or someone says, um, I can't, some type of phobic nationalist or things like that. History comments, <clears throat> one of the individuals, a legal migrant in Chicago, it is easy to find a job in Chicago. I work at a tortilla factory at night, and I get $16.75 an hour. <clears throat> Dalton, Georgia, another place where a lot of migrants are going. That's the carpet place of America. The guy who owns the carpet manufacturer down there, he goes, I pay these people $11 an hour they cut, paste, they put all this stuff together. And you know what? I do not question any paperwork they give me. Oh, you get a piece of paper? Good, I'm gonna put it over here. I'm not gonna read it. I'm not gonna e-verify it or anything. Hey, I'm paying these guys 11 bucks an hour. Just a little bit over the minimum wage and they're happy. And basically, I can work them like dogs. Guy in Denver. Hey, I get a job working for a construction company working on roofs. Yeah, it was under the table, but he paid me and everything. I got the money and he was happy. Then he said, well, I got another job cleaning industrial refrigerators out, which paid me 12 bucks an hour. And... <clears throat> It was a nighttime job. But now I finally got my, got my work with me and I now have a job that pays 20 bucks an hour. But one of the things that seemed to be consistent was the migrants who were getting money under the table or getting jobs that were questionable were working at night. So People were making money off migrant labor by working them at night so they were being out of sight. And so how does a migrant? So if I give a migrant $12 an hour, 
for $16 an hour and he or she's illegal, I put it under the table, I save Social Security, I save Workman's Comp, I save a whole bunch of other things, bingo, plain and simple. So I'm making more money, but the migrant, if he works 40 hours, or even 50, I don't pay him overtime. So 16, I give him 800 bucks a week. That means he's going to go out and spend that 800 bucks a week. He's going to buy clothes. He's going to buy food. He's going to pay for rent. So that all goes. Now look at the 20, 30,000 um, migrants in Chicago. You've got migrants in New York City, DoorDash, other deliveries. People don't care. But that's why the money that the migrants are getting it helps stimulate the economy because that money is circulating. Migrants have to have a place to live, they need clothes, they need food, all that kind of stuff. And that's what's stimulating the economy. And then basically, <clears throat> President Biden dumping over a half a trillion dollars a year into the economy that really has no justifiable reason to be because we're still over $2 trillion more a year than we did before COVID. And so it's games and gamesmanship and both sides are playing the aisle and both sides are spending like crazy and they're spending money that does not exist. And sooner or later, the spigot's going to stop. And with all great nations, Great Britain, France, Rome, um, Spain, you do not get, get beat militarily. You get beat financially. And the general gap in Vietnam knew the only way that he could beat the United States was to destroy him financially. And that's what's happening. By creating these, <clears throat> Congress and the President are putting our security at risk because foreign nations buy our bonds. If they don't buy, we're screwed.